Hey there, and welcome to NLCC Online, and thanks so much for spending part of your weekend with us. My name is Devanna, and we're going to get things kicked off here in just a couple minutes, as Pastor Mike is going to share a great message. But first, here are some things to use in order to be up to date. Good morning, church. Hey, Romans 12 is where we're going today. You'll have a chance to talk here in a moment. All right, so you guys can help me out this morning because how many of you know Scripture says that everything should be done decently and in order? See, I, I've come to learn that God works through order. He really does. And so... We want to just lay a, a foundation today so that we can all go in the same direction, so that we can all have, have some order to what God wants to do. So Romans chapter 12, and it's here in Romans 12 that Paul challenges us to take our life to Christ, our life in Christ to the next level. And let me just say this, that's God's desire for your life, by the way. He wants you to grow in your relationship with him. Now, he gives us the Holy Spirit to help us, but as Paul outlines here in Romans 12, though, there are some things that we need to do. Growth is intentional. How many of you know that? It, it's, it's intentional. Now, another way of saying that is transformation. How many of you know transformation involves growth? When things grow, they transform. When things grow, there's a metamorphosis that takes place, okay? And so how, do th how are we supposed to grow or how does transformation happen? Well, let's go back to verse number one. We touched on this last week, but let's just highlight it again. Romans 12, 1 knows what Paul says. He says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice the kind that he will find acceptable. And then he ends verse 1 saying, this is truly the way to worship him. So those of you that are taking notes, you have outlines there in front of you. Here's the first blank. Transformation begins with God. Now, we said it different last week. We said it this way. We have to live a life of worship. If we want to grow in our relationship with God, if we want our life in Christ to go to the next level, we need to learn how to worship without limits. Paul says it, we need to be a living sacrifice. Meaning when it comes to God, we're hands off. When it comes to God, we don't put a fence around our heart and say this close and no more. We're all open to God, to his will, to what he wants to do in our life. We live a life of worship. Now you guys know this, but let me just say this. Worship isn't just Sundays. Worship isn't just an hour that we set aside and think about God. Worship is every day I want to know him better. Every day I want him to lead me and guide me. Every day my desire is to become more like Christ. That's worship. And Paul says that if we're going to be those kinds of people, we have to be a living sacrifice. How many of you know that there are some things we can't do? And there are things that are okay to do, but as you talked about last week, if it causes somebody to stumble, if it causes somebody to turn away from Christ, we need to seriously consider whether it's worth doing that or not. See, that's this life of worship that Paul talks about, and that's how transformation begins. It begins with God. But I want you to see this. This idea of worship is all throughout Scripture. 
Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, Scripture is going to be on the screen, Paul talks about this again. He says it this way. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. How many of you know sin separates us from God? And when we come into this relationship with God, when our sins are forgiven, that's what Paul's talking about. We're no longer separated from God. And then he says this, And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. That's what worship is. It's being changed into God's image. How does that happen? Well, Paul tells us. He says that happens by spending time in God's glory. Change happens when you spend time in God's presence. And that's worship. And so transformation is this. It's knowing, trusting, and obeying God. That's how transformation happens. And the word we would use for that, again, is worship. What is worship? It's knowing God. It's trusting God, putting our faith in him. And it's obeying God. You remember we said this last week? It's, it's doctrine, and then it's also duty. It's taking what we know and putting it into practice, living this out every day. That's worship, and that's how we grow. That's how transformation takes place. But let's go to the next step here. This is the third thing. We're going quick. Here's the third thing. Transformation, though, Paul also says, happens through our thinking. Happens in our, in our mind. And we see this in Romans 12, verse 2. This is a passage that may be familiar to some of us today. And I want to read it in two different translations. Because some people have learned this in, in a different translation. But here's the New Living Translation first. It's going to be on the screen. I think both of them are actually there together. They will be. Here's verse, verse 1. New Living Translation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you. That's growth. Let Grow in your relationship with God. He'll change you into a new, new person. How? By changing the way we think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Now here's the NIV translation of that, and I'm going to break this up just quickly, okay? First, he says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Now, when he uses the word wor world there, he's referring to the world system. Or another way of thinking of it is this, it's the way that people live by default. Let me cl clue you in on something. When we're not in a relationship with God, when we're not following God, we live life according to our flesh. We live life according to our sin nature. And that's what Paul's referring here. When we're not living this life of worship, we do what comes natural. You ever heard somebody say that? Oh, I'm just doing what comes natural. What comes natural? Lie, cheat, steal, cuss people out, be angry. That's what comes natural. So Paul says, don't live naturally. He says, live supernaturally. Well, how do you live supernaturally? This has to change. The way we think, our mind, it has to change. Because you know this. Your mind directs your life. You do what you think. I do anyway. I am, am I the only one? That's why, you know, we can put it in practical terms, but you think about that dress that you saw in the shop, you're eventually going to go buy it. Because our thinking, it directs our life. So our thinking can direct us to God or can direct us away from God. This is deep, isn't it? So Paul says, don't conform to the world. Don't live life by default. So let's think about the world's system. We could spend a lot of time on this, but what's the world's philosophy? Well, it's pretty simple. If you want something, you just go get it. That's what the world teaches. If you want it, you make it happen. You go get it. 
The world says that people are only important because of what they can do for you. If somebody can't help you, if somebody can't do something for you, then they don't matter. And, and let me just say that. That's why abortion is such a hot-button topic, because these, these little people, they are people, they are humans in the mother's womb. They can't do anything for people, so people look at them as unimportant. Oh, you didn't think you were going to hear that today, did you? But what else does the world say? Public opinion defines truth. That's what's happening in our culture today. If enough people believe it, it must be true. It must be okay. It must be acceptable. And let me just say that. That's why scripture says in the last days, evil will be called good and good will be called evil. Why? Because it's public opinion. Public opinion. That's what people do. People say that popularity is more important than holiness. Right? As, as long as I do a good job or you do a good job, it doesn't really matter how you live your life. It doesn't matter what you do. As long as you're popular, you can do whatever you want to do. That's okay. The world says this, that faith and everyday living are unrelated. You can have faith but still live like the devil. It doesn't matter. They, they, they don't go together. That's the world system. That's what you're seeing happening. The world's saying this, that you are the center of your universe. Did you notice that everything in our culture today, it revolves around you? It revolves around me. And let me just say that, that's not right thinking. The universe doesn't revolve around me. The world doesn't revolve around you. The world revolves around Jesus Amen. and his truth. What's the world say? That just be tolerant. Just accept everybody, accept what everybody does. And oh, by the way, there's no absolute truth. And that's what Paul's talking about. He's, he's saying that's how people live by default. That's how people live when they don't know God, when they don't have a relationship with God. So let me just say this. We shouldn't be surprised. I think we do that as Christians sometimes. We look at the world and we're like in shock. <gasps> and if Paul were here, he would say, why are you in shock? Because when people don't know God, that's how they live life. They just do what comes natural. They, they just follow their feelings. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Paul says you want to grow, don't be conformed to this world. Now here's what conformed means. This is important. Conformed is a passive verb. So what Paul's saying here is that we can't be passive about our faith. If you want to grow in your relationship with God, you can't be passive. Because again, when he says, don't be conformed, he's saying this, if you don't actively and intentionally resist this age or the world system, he's saying you're going to be just like them. So instead of being separate, that's what holiness means, by the way. It means called out ones. That when we've given our life to Christ, he's called us out of the world or the way the world lives their life, right? Right? And Paul's saying that if we don't actively pursue our faith, if we don't actively grow in our relationship with Christ, instead of standing out, we're going to blend in. And we're just going to become like everybody else. We're going to do what everybody else does. And that doesn't lead to growth. That doesn't lead to things happening or changing in our life. So Paul says, don't conform to the pattern of this world. Notice what else he goes on to say. But be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Now you might want to write this down as a side note. Renewing simply means this. That you agree with God in his ways. You want your mind to change. Your thinking to change. Your life to change. You have to agree with God. And also with what he says. His ways. That's a renewed mind. And then this is pretty cool. Paul says, then 
you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So did you know that the way we think can transform our life? It can. A lot of the transformation that's happened in your life, it started here first. And again, some of it was simple. Like summer's coming. Oh, I better lose some weight. I better get in shape or, you know, whatever it is. It starts here with, with our thinking. The way we think, it can transform our life. Now, I want to leave us with this. Here's what transformation is not, though. It's not a result. Here's the last blank. Of feeling or doing. And I, I want to touch on this for a minute. A lot of people, they base their life on their feelings. Now, we all do this. But how, how do I feel today? Do, do I feel like exercising today? No, nah, so I, I probably won't. Do, do I feel like eating healthy today? No, so I'll probably get the Twinkies and donuts. But we base our, our life on our feelings. And, and we do this so often, right? It's like, how do I feel today? And some of us woke up like that. Oh, I don't, I don't feel like going to church today. Well, I'll, I'll tune in some other time, I guess, right? But we do this. Uh, how do I feel about my job? And again, that's why a lot of people hop from job to job to job. There's, I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but a lot of it's like, I, I just, I don't feel like going to my job today. I don't feel like doing this kind of whatever anymore. I'm going to do something else, right? We base our life on our feelings. We base our life on how do I feel about my spouse. Don't a lot of people do that? Oh, I don't feel like being married today. <laughs> so, so we have our irreconcilable differences and we split up and we go our separate ways because we base everything on feelings. And let me just say this, love isn't a feeling. Because when it comes to our relationships, there's a lot of times when we don't feel love. It, it's a commitment. And that comes from this. I, I'm in this. I'm committed to this. We, we base our life on how do I feel about worship? And again, we do this so often, we don't even think about it. Oh, the presence of God was there today. Why? Because I felt goosebumps. Come on, we do this. Or the presence of God was there today because the pastor talked about what I'm interested in. So the presence of God was there. I'm just trying to help us today, right? We live our life based on our feelings. And here's what you need to know. If we live our life based on our feelings, we will never change. We will never be transformed because we're not renewing our mind. Now the other side of the coin is this. Some people, they live their life based on what they do. And they'll say things like this. Don't, don't give me doctrine. Don't give me theology. Just tell me what to do. Some of us as husbands, that's how we approach things, right? I do that with Lisa sometimes. I'm like, I don't need all this other stuff. Just tell me what to do. Give me the list. I need it. Right? Tell me what to do. Or just give me some knowledge. I just, I just need knowledge. But understand, just living a life based on that, just knowledge and information, that doesn't transform our life. Knowledge doesn't transform your life. Because some of us know a whole lot of stuff, but we're not living it. We're, we're not doing it. We're not putting it into practice. So let me leave you with this. The foundation of the Christian life 
is not how you feel or what you do. Let me say that one more time. The foundation of our Christian life is not how you feel and it's not what you do. The foundation of our Christian life is this. What does God's word say? That is the foundation of the Christian life. What did Jesus say? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John says that Jesus was the word in flesh. So what do we base our life on? Not how I feel. And not on what I'm doing. I base my life on who Jesus Christ is. What he has done for me, but what he says. See, how does this change? By lining our mind up with this. When God's thoughts become our thoughts, our life will change. Our relationships will change. The way we treat people, the way we talk, the way we live our life, it will change. Somebody said this, and I never forgot it. God's word works when you work it. When we put God's word into our life and we meditate on God's word, what does the scripture say? The grass withers and the flowers fade away. But God's word will stand forever. God's word will stand the test of time. Why? Because Jesus is the word. And he is king of kings and lord of lords. And when we line our thoughts up with his thoughts, his thoughts are in here. And when we say, you know what, I I agree with this, and I'm going to live this out, our life will change. At this time, I want to invite you to give. If you're new with us, don't feel an obligation to give whatsoever. We're so glad you're here. If you did come prepared to give, there is a section on our website where you can do so. Hey, thanks so much for being here with us today. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week on Facebook, which is New Life Oshkosh, and Instagram at NLCCFam. We believe God has something unique to say to you, and our hope is that you feel his love stronger today than ever before. Thanks again for being with us, and we hope you have a great week.